I believe in Sam Darnold. Now, I think the beauty of this pick is they signed Tyrod Taylor in the offseason. I think he's an undervalued starting quarterback, so Darnold can develop at his own pace. He beats you in the pocket. He beats you outside the pocket. But again, if he's ready week one, that's awesome. If he sits for a year, that's fine, too. And let's watch the Darnold tape to tell the story. And really, what it's all about for Sam Darnold is 6'3 and a half, 220. He has plus arm talent. But I think what he does best, he's looking left. It's not there. Pulls the ball down. Eyes are up all the time. Now watch this throw. He's going to throw a receiver open on the back end of the end zone in a very tiny window. Bootleg on the run. Eyes up. Tremendously accurate on the move. Again, in the pocket. Now watch. This is a kid that in high school basketball averaged over 20 points a game. He's an athlete. He can beat you with his legs, but here's the rub. Faulty ball security, especially in the pocket. One-handed, it's loose, it's lax, and it's unacceptable from a high-level quarterback. So it's not just the interceptions. It's the ball security in the pocket, but I think that's eminently coachable, and I think that's going to happen to him immediately when he sets foot in Cleveland. Saquon Barkley, uh -oh. welcome to New York. Now, I'm talking six foot, 233 pounds. He ran 4'4", and I think he's the best football. I call it the big three. Saquon Barkley, Bradley Chubb, and Quentin Nelson are the three best players in this draft. He's special. The Giants commit to him in the run game. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He makes it easier for Eli, and he buys them time to develop that offensive line. You watch the film. He's a legitimate top 10 running back. Now, at 233 pounds, watch this jump cut, lateral jump cut. Now the 4-4 speed. Watch this, folks. Just watch this. Break an ankle, break another ankle, run away from people. That's a crazy run against Iowa. Now, look at the – this is what I love, the contact balance, the lower body strength. He's a weight room freak. He runs through that, and there comes 4-4 again. Now, this is a joke. Watch the pass game. little stick-nod route against a linebacker or a safety. A little bit like a Le'Veon Bell, a big back that you can split out and run routes. Here's the only knock on him. Too many times, jump cuts, trying to turn and gain extra yardage. Almost ran himself into a safety there against Ohio State. New York, welcome. Broadway. Oh, boy. Baker. Mayfield. Oh, are you <laughs> in New York? <laughs> New York City. I think this is one of those energy givers that fires up football teams and embraces the spotlight. The bigger it got, the bigger the chip on his shoulder got, and the more he wanted to prove everybody wrong. I mean, let's roll the videotape. That's what it's all about with these quarterbacks. What does the tape tell you about Baker Mayfield? Now, I thought he struggled against Texas, but here you see him. He's looking short, pump fake, and nice little touch in the middle of the field. He's patient with a wide open pocket, but where he's best, play action, right? Pocket, breaks down, roll to his left. Watch him throw the back of the end zone, throws him open, a dart. Tremendous accuracy, almost a 70% guy, and a little bit like Darnold, good athlete. He can beat you in the planned quarterback run game. He can beat you outside the pocket. Here's where he struggles. Any sophisticated NFL-style coverages, little zone blitz type of situation, he loses underneath coverage. I thought he struggled against Texas with some of those looks. His challenge is going to be to learn to win in the pocket against NFL defenses with sophisticated coverage schemes. I think Chubb is the next best football player at six foot four, 270 pounds. You pair him with Miles Garrett, and all of a sudden, you've got the most dynamic edge-rushing duo in all of football. Now, I compare this young man to Joey Bosa, and I don't do it lightly. He sets a physical edge in the run game. He's got enough speed to win outside. He's got heavy hands and a tremendous motor. I think he thought quarterback. I think he thought trade down. But at the end of the day, the best football player on the board is Quentin Nelson, the left guard from Notre Dame. Now, it's an intriguing thought process. They're three years removed from a Super Bowl. If they draft a quarterback or trade down, I think they're admitting they're not that close right now. By taking this guard, who's going to help that quarterback get better, I think Case Keenum has stabilized that quarterback situation. He only turned the ball over eight times last year. All right, that gets us to the Indianapolis Colts, who have the sixth pick. Well, hold on. We have some breaking news out of the Mike Mayock newsroom. <laughs> What's going on here? 
Well, I mean, let's face it. The Buffalo Bills haven't been stockpiling draft picks for no reason whatsoever. They tried to get up to four for Cleveland, five for Denver. They're worried about Arizona behind them coming up ahead. So they exchanged the sixth pick and the 12th pick, and they get the number six. They give the Colts 22 and 65. And with that pick, the Buffalo Bills take the quarterback with the most upside in this draft, Josh Allen. Oh, ho, ho. Dude is 6'5", 237. He's the same size as Carson Wentz with bigger arm talent, and he's a better athlete. Now, he's not ready to play as early as Carson Wentz, but I'm telling you, out of maybe any player in this draft, his upside might be the highest. And I believe his football IQ and passion is equal to that of, say, a Carson Wentz. He's already tightened up the motion. Now, here's play action. Watch him climb the pocket, and this is what I'm talking about, arm talent. Nobody makes that throw that way in the entire NFL. This is even better. Free runner misses, climbs the pocket, rolls left. This is 40 yards on the run to his left to a tiny window. Are you kidding me? And then quarterback power. They Wyoming used him in the run game an awful lot, and he's a low. This is a real good football player. The issue is he throws late off his back foot, and the question of anticipation, timing, and accuracy is what's going to take him a little while to get used to. All right, let's rip through a few of these teams. Let's start yeah. with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 7. Tampa Bay Buccaneers take Derwin James, the safety from Florida State. Now, they were 32 in yards on defense, pass defense, third down defense, and sacks. They took care of the front four in free agency. This kid's special on the back end. You can match him up with tight ends. You can even match him up a little bit on the slot, and I love the way he plays. At number eight, Chicago can't believe Roquan Smith fell to them. 6'1", 236. He's today's NFL linebacker. Runs 4-5, goes sideline to sideline. He might be a four-down player. Play all three downs and then special teams. I've heard comparisons from Jonathan Vilma to Derek Brooks. That's rare air. San Francisco sitting at number nine. They signed 30-year-old Richard Sherman. He's got an Achilles. Denzel Ward, most people's number one corner. 188 pounds, ran 4.38, oily hips, can drop and run with anybody. Look at this play. Easily runs with the tight end, flips his head around. That was easy. Just talked about was Mike McGlinchey. The tackle from Notre Dame, six foot eight, 309 pounds. I've known this kid since he was about 14 or 15 years old. He's Matt Ryan's cousin, and he's got the exact same football IQ and passion for the game of football that Matt Ryan does. Pick 11. Where are we going? Going Tremaine Edmonds, the 19-year-old off-the-ball linebacker from Virginia Tech. Six four and a half, 253. Dude ran 4-5-4, and I think he could develop into an edge rusher on top of it. So in third down and sub packages, he's on the field tracking quarterbacks. Chris Ballard does. Minka Fitzpatrick, the safety from Alabama. Now, please understand, the Colts have multiple needs. That's why Chris Ballard went from 3-6 to six and 6-12. to 12. Give him kudos for coming up with a bunch of football players, starting with Fitzpatrick. You pair him with Malik, Cook, uh, Malik Hooker, and they're the two best young safeties in the game. Washington, number 32 against the run. It's Vita Vea, the six foot four, 347 pound freak of a man. Now, when you're 32 against the run and averaging four and a half yards per carry, it's time to stop it. Vea can do that. The key to his value is how much he'll pl actually play in sub package. Green Bay Packers at 14 are excited. The Jair Alexander, the ascending corner from Louisville, is still on the board. 5'10", 196, ran 4'38", edgy, tough, competes, finds the ball in the air, and added value as a punt returner. Josh Rosen slid all the way to 15, and they take advantage of it. They run the card up front. The slide has ended. He's the most ready-to-play quarterback in this draft. He's a beautiful, natural thrower. I like his intelligence. I like his toughness. The only thing he's got to learn is to understand when the play is over, like in Eli Manning, get the ball out of his hands so he doesn't get hurt. This is a talented kid. He'll be playing initially behind Sam Bradford, but at the end of the day, 
He's a difference maker. He's the most natural and beautiful thrower in this draft. I mean, he could wake up at 4 in the morning and just go out and rip an 18-yard comeback. He's always on balance. When he has clear feet and clear vision, nobody does it any better. Look at here. Clear feet and vision, drives at the pocket. Look at this throw between the corners and safety. You couldn't walk it out there any better. Under center, play action. Again, this time he's going to manipulate the free safety in the middle of the field. Move him to his left, get him out of the middle, and come back to the right and throw a skinny post. Beautiful eye manipulation and throw. Here's the problem. Struggle staying clean in the pocket, gets hit too often. Shoulder injury two years ago, a couple of concussions last year, but still stayed in and delivered a great throw. At pick number 16, I'm, I'm enjoying this pick just for the record. You want to soak it in a little bit? Yeah, and I think they're going to change the entire direction of the oh, franchise. Oh, 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 it's, it's Lamar Jackson. Now, Joe Flacco has not been as productive as his salary would indicate since they won the Super Bowl. Ozzy, Eric DaCosta, John Harbaugh roll out a bold new era. It's Lamar Jackson time. I think with what happened last year with Deshaun Watson, and I thought Bill O'Brien did a great job of putting him in his comfort zone. It was, Deshaun, what do you feel comfortable with? We're going to take a bunch of college philosophies and bring it into the NFL game. And he was electric. And now in Baltimore, what you're saying is eventually when we commit to him, we're changing our scheme. We're changing our philosophy. And what's beautiful about this, Chris, is they signed a guy by the name of RG3 recently. Uh, let's continue on. Pick number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers are doing what? they got to stop the run, man. And, and Deron Payne from Alabama is up there with Vita Vea as the best run stopper in this draft. Six two and a half, three eleven, 3'11", ran 4.95. He's got a little more twitch for, for a big guy than people think. Remember, Corey Legit, four-game suspension. Brandon Niebame, 33 years old. He also has some potential pass rush upside. I thought his best game was the national championship game against Georgia. At the end of the day, it's the best corner or edge rusher on their board, and it's Marcus Davenport. 6'5 and a half, 264. He ran 4'58. Folks, he's a freakish athlete, but he's incredibly raw. I love the matchup for him in Seattle. Stick your hand in the dirt and go hunt quarterbacks. He's got a lot to learn, but remember, Cliff Averill with his neck, Frank Clark's in a contract year. Dallas Cowboys, oh, I don't know, a few people around here might be excited to find out they're taking. Portland Sutton. Look, you know, they cut Des Bryant. So we're talking about a six foot three and a half, 218 pound power receiver. I think early in his career, he's kind of outside the numbers, red zone. He's got outstanding hands. Ran 4-5-4. Four, four. Yeah, I, I think what it is, is immediately you can throw the ball to this guy. Stick nod, red zone accelerate to the middle of the field. He's got great hands. Uses his big body to shield the defensive back. That's the key for him next year is to be physical and use that body. But he can run. Gets on top of the corner, finds the football, comes back to it. He's got very strong hands. And again, there's the oh. signature one-hand catch. Here's oh. another signature one-hand catch. Let me do it left-handed this time. So his hands are incredible. Harold Landry from Boston College. The edge rusher is the best dip and flatten guy in the draft. Now, listen to me, folks. I said he's the best dip guy. I dip, you dip, we dip. That is Harold Landry. Accelerates the quarterback. The concern there is whether or not he'll set a physical edge. Reminds me of Yannick Ngakwe. He can play, and he fits that team. 21, the Cincinnati Bengals. Frank Ragnow. Missed the last five games of the year, had ankle surgery. I think what changed the opinion with a lot of pro scouts, he's the best natural center in the draft, but they played him against Bama at guard, and he dominated the best front in the country. He can play all three positions. And in Indianapolis, how about Isaiah Wynn? Chris Ballard got one of the best safeties in the draft, now one of the best interior lineman. He played left tackle at Georgia. I think he can get you out of a game at tackle, but I love what he does in his zone scheme offensive line. I love the pick at 27. Pittsburgh, in a surprise move, takes Sony Michelle at number 28. 5'10 and a half, 214. Reminds me a lot of Alvin Kamara with the ball in his hands. I don't think he's quite as good in the pass game, but in the run game, he's violent. He's physical. He's elusive. And I think he's the perfect complement 
for Le'Veon Bell. The team that knocked out the Pittsburgh Steelers in the postseason a year ago, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the surprise of the NFL a year ago. It was phenomenal. They take Hayden Hurst, the tight end from South Carolina. Six four and a half, two fifty. Ran four six seven. The reason why I like this guy is not only can you split him wide and let him catch the football, but he actually commits in the run game, and that's rare with tight ends coming out of the college game these days. Minnesota at number thirty. Need help on the offensive line? They take Will Hernandez. Six two and a half, three twenty seven. You want to talk about a road grader with an edge? He doesn't like people, and he finishes. <laughs> now, he was 340 at the Senior Bowl, and he is a stone people mover in the run game. Going to take James Daniels, the best pure center in this draft from Iowa. It makes sense for a couple of reasons. You know, number one, in addition to being a pure center, he comes from Iowa and Kirk Ferentz. Ferentz coached with Belichick in Cleveland. They trust him. They love him. And Dante Skarniecki, the offensive line coach, now has Daniels and Colton Miller to work with. Philadelphia Eagles at 32. Darius Geis. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. 5'10 and a half, 224, runs a sub 4'5", 40. He is a north-south slasher and a tough guy. He finishes runs. He's had some off-the-field issues. The reason I love this pick, running back coach Deuce Staley in Philadelphia, who I know well, will get this kid straight.